On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Hurricanes, Puerto Rico, Ships, and the Jones Act. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCoglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Uh, Cat 1 storm that has devastated, once again, the island of Puerto Rico. And let me be 100% clear about something before we go one second further into this video. Number one, my sympathies and my heart goes out to everybody affected by this storm. And I wanna see them get aid and assistance as quick as they can. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna talk about that at the end of this video about what we need to be doing to fix this situation that seems to happen perennially with hurricanes hitting Puerto Rico. I am a volunteer firefighter, been a volunteer firefighter for 25 years. I believe firmly in helping our neighbors when they need them. And Puerto Rico is 100% part of the United States. We should provide all the aid and assistance to them. Having said that, it is typical that when a storm hits Puerto Rico, that the issue of the Jones Act, the Merchant Marine Act of 1920, specifically Section 27, that says that only U.S. built, U.S. flagged, U.S. crewed, and U.S. owned vessels can transport goods between one U.S. port to another U.S. port. Now, listen, I have advocated for the Jones Act for a long time, but at the same time, I am willing to waive the Jones Act when necessary to provide aid. There is a situation happening right now off Puerto Rico that needs to be put into context because my fear is that oil companies are using this as an advantage to leverage the issue going on with Puerto Rico to get a Jones Act waiver to further weaken this issue. Again, if aid is needed, it needs to be there 100% as quick as possible. No one should suffer as a result of a storm or a hurricane. So, all right, let's look at this story. So this story comes to us from a, a variety of sources. And this one right here is one that's being put out there by David Begnod. Uh, Begnod, I'm not sure how to say it. I apologize if I said it wrong. Lead national correspondent for CBS Mornings, for CBS News. He posted this video and I'm gonna play this video and I, I'm just gonna comment on it as it goes on. I probably won't play the whole video here, but go ahead and let it play. It is 1 a.m. on Monday as I record this video, and here's the headline. There is a ship with 300,000 barrels of diesel off the southern coast of Puerto Rico that is prepared to deliver the diesel at a time when the island needs all the diesel it can get. Okay, that is 100% true. So the vessel in question here is this one, the G.H. Parks. This is a Marshall Islands flagged vessel that was off, it's off the southern coast right now. There she is just south of, uh, or just to the southwest of Ponce. She came from Texas City and now sitting off the port. The vessel itself, pull down here, a little bit of detail on it, sailed from Texas City to the port of Guiana, Anila. I apologize, I, my Spanish is, is not good. I get banged for pronunciation all the time. She's a Marshall Island flag vessel, 13 years old, oil chemical tanker loaded with diesel fuel, 50,000 deadweight tons. That translates to roughly about 300,000 barrels of diesel fuel, 42 gallons in a barrel. So a lot of diesel fuel sitting off there. Uh, the vessel did arrive from Texas City the other day and is now in this holding pattern, sitting here underway at six knots, just south of the island. All right, let's go back to David. This is reporting that was first done, the story was first broken by Mardelli Susino, uh, who works for La Noticias Teleonce. She broke the story. I then, after speaking with her, started making calls. I spoke with the Puerto Rico Ports Director, I spoke with the United States Coast Guard, and I spoke with a source who has a direct understanding and knowledge of what is on this ship and what is needed, uh, let's just say, to get the ship to Puerto Rico. So here's what we know. There is a ship, I'm told it is a British petroleum ship, that it is a BP ship, uh, they're the brokers, they're the ones who loaded the ship out. Now this vessel had sailed from New York, offloaded fuel in New York, and then went to Houston, Texas, where it loaded out of Texas City. That reportedly was stocked with the diesel in Texas City, Texas, 
it departed Texas City, Texas for the Caribbean. And according to my source, uh, as a favor, if you will, uh, British Petroleum has parked off the coast of Puerto Rico wanting to deliver this diesel, understanding that Puerto Rico needs help in the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona, and diesel helps gas stations, hospitals, the government of Puerto Rico. Uh, okay, I, I, I got to stop for one second here. <clears throat> A favor. I Listen, I'm not being mean to British Petroleum, but very few companies like British Petroleum do favors. This is economics. This ship sailed from Texas City. It obviously had a port of destination because the port of destination was not Puerto Rico because the ship never logged as making an arrival at Puerto Rico. The port, uh, the, 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 the port authority in Puerto Rico knows nothing about this ship arriving. This ship has just arrived, is sitting off the port for a day, taunting, I mean, coming in. This is a Marshall Island flag vessel that loaded U.S. cargo. It knows, BP knows this ship cannot come into Puerto Rico under the Jones Act without a Jones Act waiver. Why would you sail this vessel to Puerto Rico and sit it off the coast if you know you can't come in there? There are American flagships that can do this. BP is loading cargo in ships in ports a lot closer than Texas City to this. Right now in the port of San Juan are two ships, one loaded in Guadalupe, which is 300 miles from Puerto Rico, another one loaded in Cartagena in Colombia, that's 850 miles away. Why is BP putting the ship off the coast of Puerto Rico when they know they can't come in? I understand that David's saying it's a favor, but if you had a favor, why did you not start the process to get a waiver sooner than when the ship arrived off the post? It sailed for 2,250 miles to get here. It's been sailing for days to get here. Why is there no waiver put in place yet? Um, big players, small players, everyone who needs it. The problem is there. the ship has a foreign flag. I'm told it's a flag of the Marshall Islands. Uh, it is. In fact, if you go on a maritime shipping uh, app, you can actually see the ship off the coast of Puerto Rico. Just do that. And because of the Jones Act, I'm told that the foreign flag ship cannot move into Puerto Rico to deliver the diesel unless it obtains a Jones Act waiver. All right. Okay, the only reason it can't do it is because it loaded an American cargo. If this ship had gone and loaded fuel in Colombia, in Aruba, in Curaçao, in Guadalupe, or any of the places closer than Texas City, it could deliver all the oil, all the diesel fuel at once. But because it loaded in Texas City, that prohibits it from doing that. Now, again, I go back to BP. What was the original destination for the ship? The problem is this is a broker doing this. And oil brokers, gas brokers, try to find the best price. And if, if they are smelling the fact that they can get a best price here in Puerto Rico because it's got hit by a hurricane, that should be an issue that we're all mad about because they're taking an opportunity at the suffering of people in Puerto Rico to deliver cargo. That is opportunism. I spoke with the Puerto Rico ports director and he told me that he has confirmed that there is in fact a request from the company that has the diesel on its ship. That company, British Petroleum, has filed a request with the Department of Homeland Security asking that the ship with this foreign flag be allowed to enter a Puerto Rico port to deliver the diesel. All right. Why is BP requesting this? This shouldn't be BP requesting this. If there was an emergency need of diesel in the southern coast of Puerto Rico, that should have been conveyed. A broker should have been obtained to get cargo and bring it in and be working the Jones Act waiver beforehand. This is BP, again, being opportunistic here, trying to come in with this cargo. Again, if they're being magnificent, mag, oh, sorry, if they're trying to be altruistic, then donate this cargo. Don't make Puerto Rico pay for it. If BP tells me this is free cargo, I'm going to believe them then, that they're donating this to help the people of Puerto Rico. I don't think they are. I think that they're working in this because they see an opportunity for a quick profit to dump off 300,000 barrels of diesel fuel quickly and then head back to Texas City, load up with more diesel fuel and go someplace else and sell it. That's the concern I have regarding this. That request, I'm told, is pending according to the Puerto Rico ports director, 
who says he has spoken to multiple people who are aware of this situation and know that they are waiting on the federal government to make a decision. Will the federal government grant a Jones Act waiver to allow this ship to enter a southern port and drop off these roughly 300,000 barrels of diesel? I don't know if all the barrels of diesel would go to Puerto Rico, but the intention, my understanding is from the phone calls that I had tonight, is they would. Okay, that means that there is 300,000 barrels of capacity in southern Puerto Rico to take this cargo. I don't know. That That is beyond my knowledge. I don't know that. I don't know if anyone knows that. If you do, hey, let us know. But I'm wondering whether there is, because I bet you that that's a lot of diesel fuel. I don't know if there's going to be 300,000 barrels of capacity there. Just do the cal calculations. That's 12.6 million gallons of diesel fuel. So, I mean, you're going to need a lot of capacity to put it in there. I also spoke with the United States Coast Guard. The Coast Guard said that as of right now, they aren't even aware, they weren't at the time I talked to them, that there was this ship holding offshore. It was far enough offshore to where the Coast Guard wasn't even aware of it. The Coast Guard explained to me that usually a ship that intends to enter port to drop off something like diesel would give a 96 hour advance notice. Okay, it takes five to six days to sail from Texas City to the southern shore of Puerto Rico. So why didn't BP start this sooner? I, I mean, again, it, 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 the hurricane came ashore last week. So why is it taking this long now for them to start doing this? And my understanding from the people who have knowledge of this situation is that hasn't been done yet because they haven't gotten the approval on the Jones Act waiver. So they're waiting to get the approval on the Jones Act waiver from the federal government. They're hoping that the federal government says, no problem, you come in with your foreign flagship and you drop it off. At which point the company would then make a request of the United States Coast Guard to enter the southern port. Now, I got to disagree with David on this one here. First of all, this Jones Act waiver request should have been in beforehand. Why are they, you don't bring the ship in and then sit there and say, hi, I'm BP. I have all the diesel fuel you'll need. But you're going to need to push a Jones Act waiver in 24 hours, by the way, because if not, we're going to go and go sell this diesel fuel to somebody else. That really, that's the crappy thing that BP is doing to you. You realize that, right? This is what BP is doing. They're basically telling you, hey, you got 24 hours or else we're out of here. Freaking nice, BP. Real nice. To deliver the diesel. So as it stands now, as of this reporting time, 105 Eastern on Monday, the ship is holding offshore. Now, there is some time sensitivity here because um, the individual who, who would take receipt of the diesel um, and others associated with that individual have told me that the ship is not going to stay offshore forever. Uh, okay. I, I, David makes his point a little bit further and he kind of repeats what he said here. But again, the, the issue here is that there's a finite amount of time that this ship's going to be off the coast. And again, BP, if you wanted to get this fuel delivered, you could have said this long before this, but you didn't. And that's the problem I have with this, is that BP now is putting a gun to the U.S. head to basically sit there and say, you got 24 hours or else we're going to sail and we're out of here. I, again, the other issue I have here, too, is, and again, I am not on the ground in Puerto Rico. I don't know the situation. And I listen, I understand what happens when a hurricane comes through. I live in North Carolina. I know about hurricanes too. And the issue that happens here isn't a shortage of material. It's the distribution of that material. You have food and fuel and water and everything. You just can't get it to where it needs to go. And, you know, we've seen this before. This is, for example, a story from NPR just the other day, September 23rd, talking about power outages, problems assessing fuel force Puerto Rico grocery stores to close. And you go down in the story and what they start talking about here is number one, they're talking about the downplay of a fuel shortage right here. Puerto Rico's Department of Commerce, uh, Consumer Affairs said there's no shortage of fuel, but rather a disruption to the system as a result of flooding, landslides and island wide power outage caused by Fiona. Some fuel stations were unable to open or could not refill in the storm's early aftermath. Uh, goes on here, there's no basis to talk about a fuel shortage in, South, in Puerto Rico. He added that the agency also found sufficient supplies of basic goods. 
Uh, on Thursday evening, Rivera announced that Cruz finally restored power to a gasoline distribution terminal in the southeastern town of Yabuca. Again, I apologize for my pronunciation. That had been operating at a third capacity because it was running on a generator. Rivera said that this could speed up distribution of fuel across the island because the terminal can now operate 24 hours a day until the island recovers. He said there's 16 days worth of regular gasoline, 17 for day diesel, and 29 for premium. Okay, well, then is there a diesel shortage? I understand. Listen, I understand 100% the situation. I've been in storms where roads are cut and you can't get through. But if you dump 300,000 barrels of diesel at a port, it doesn't help you for the inland and you can't get it there. It doesn't matter if you have one barrel or 300,000 barrels. If you can't get it there, that's the problem. And the issue here, again, is this attack that the Jones Act is the problem for all this. And it's not. A few days ago, a batch of congressmen wrote this letter where they're basically talking about this. They're basically discussing this issue of what is wrong. And this letter signed by uh, seven members or eight members of Congress basically, again, talks about the Jones Act being waived. And, and l let me be clear, the issue with hurricanes in, in this area is that there is not enough logistics that follows behind them. I did a story a few years ago uh, when a, a hurricane went through the Bahamas. And when the hurricane went through the Bahamas, I wrote this story, Mounts Bay to the rescue. The British will station in the Caribbean during hurricane season, one of their Royal Fleet Auxiliary vessels. This is what's called an LPD or LSDA. Uh, this is a civilian manned vessel that has a well deck that can offload watercraft, it has a helicopter deck and they follow in and what they do is they can bring in supplies they actually have these barges here that they put in the water and they can land cargo ashore and so i talked about the mounts bay and the effort they did wrote a whole story about mounts bay and what they did and i think we should be doing this on a basis too why is it that the u.s military during hurricane season not even just the military uh fema the u.s uh, uh transportation all the u.s government load up one of the reserve ships that we have sitting along our coast, load it full of water with uh, engineering equipment, with portable generators, with uh, barrels of fuel and diesel and everything you need, load it up. And when a hurricane comes, you set sail with that vessel, you send it out into the uh, Atlantic or the Caribbean, and you let it follow in behind the hurricane. And when the hurricane comes ashore, whether it's Puerto Rico, heading for Tampa right now in Florida, it heads up to Nova Scotia, you bring the ship in and man, this ship can serve as this emergency supply. It can load, offload diesel fuel in five gallon ba barrels or buckets. It, uh, uh, buckets, not buckets, you know what I mean, a five gallon jerry can. Uh, you can offload water, you can offload generators, you can offload food supplies. Everything you need is pre-packed on that ship ready to go. Because I, I gotta tell you, I guarantee you, a hurricane will come ashore somewhere. And as long as you got water in the beach, you can bring a ship in, bring helicopters to it, bring barges, bring watercraft, offload, and provide sustainment. That what's missing in Puerto Rico right now isn't a waiver of the Jones Act, is why the crud doesn't the army have some of their watercraft stationed in Puerto Rico? Why is the Puerto Rico National Guard not have those amphibious watercraft that can load up with all that material and hit the entire perimeter of the island? You don't need ports, you just come up on the beach and offload it? Why are there not helicopters ranging the island, dropping this stuff off and heading out to this vessel offshore that's loaded with this gear, loading it up and bringing it ashore for everybody? That's the question that should be asked. This issue of a Jones Act waiver for diesel fuel off the coast, it, it I, I, listen, if there's a diesel fuel shortage right now, then wave the vessel in and bring it in. But let me be clear, the process that they used for this is fishy as anything. I mean, I'm telling you, this is opportunistic by BP. There is an issue here that they're trying to raise this level and create a stir of events. And I guarantee you, everybody who opposes the Jones Act right now is jumping on this bandwagon and sitting here going, this is why we need to repeal the Jones Act. Listen, there is Watercraft, Crowley, and all the major shipping firms are in San Juan. San Juan has announced that they're up in full running and that there's plenty of sustainable. What we need is why, again, does FEMA, the U.S. government, not load a ship every spring, every summer, 
and have it ready to go so that when these things happen, you come in right behind it, the area that's most devastated, and you have a base now to operate from where helicopters and boats and sea lift can bring this stuff ashore along with watercraft in Puerto Rico. Again, I, I don't understand how many times these things have to happen. You can't wait days to help someone. You die without water in three days, you die without food in nine days. Again, this is basic, simple rescue. I, again, I work in a local fire department. This is simple rescue. You know, you gotta have enough to sustain yourself until supplies can be brought in. All right, Whew. sorry. It, it gets me fired up that people use these issues of people in distress to get across a point. And it bothers me a lot that they do this. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, don't help me. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Help the people in Puerto Rico. They need help. Go to the Red Cross. Go to uh, uh, organizations and donate to them. Help them because they're suffering from a hurricane. That's where the aid can go. Florida's getting ready to get hit. Nova Scotia just got hit. A lot of people need a lot more assistance than I do. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.